What's up guys, welcome back to our channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Nick Torres. I'm an outfielder slash first baseman um, in the Padres organization and also am a coach for top tier baseball here um, in Southern California while I'm home for the off season. So one of the questions I get a lot from the kids that are playing in that top tier club is what kind of glove do I use? What do I prefer to use? Um, what are some of the most popular gloves and stuff? And um, this is a good question because I actually just got a first baseman's glove sent to me and I was breaking it in and we were kind of talking and realized that's a good thing to uh, inform a lot of people about because like I said, it's a question I get all the time. So this outfielder's glove I have, all the stuff I have right here is Rawlings. I actually have a Rawlings deal. This is a glove I used last year and actually the year before. So it's just a 12 and three quarter inches and it is a pro preferred outfitters glove with an H web you see here. So I prefer H webs. Um, I think it's a lot easier to form a pocket with them and um, I just like the feel of them a lot better. So that's what I use and the difference generally is is that pro preferred and heart of the hide are like the two most big names at least in Rawlings gloves and so the pro preferred tend to break in a little slower. It's like harder leather um, and harder the hide is usually pretty quick to break in. Um, but after that, it's just kind of preference. You know, there's a lot of debate over the harder the hide holds better, the pro preferred holds better. So I'm not real picky about that. And I felt like even though this is a pro preferred that it broke in pretty quick. And I go two to three fingers in the pinky pocket. So it helps me to create a nice big pocket right here. I don't have fingers in the way. Um, so I'm not like this, I'm like this in my glove pretty much. I also have this other glove, which is the one I actually got for last season and I wasn't too keen on it. Um, it's a trapeze web and I thought I'd try that out. And I'm not big on the trapeze gloves. So to me, I just feel like they're real flimsy and maybe that's my own fault that I didn't um, form it right. But when you're going to get a ground ball or anything, I feel like I can't trust this on the ground that it gets real flimsy. Whereas this one, you see there's a little more binding around the top. And so it's a little easier to handle the ball, at least on ground balls and stuff. But this does have a nice pocket. Um, I will say that. One of the best ways that I found to break in a glove it's something that I haven't necessarily done in the past, but I've had friends tell me about this. My friend Zach told me that what he does is takes a softball, puts it in his outfielder's glove. So for instance, if I was using this one, if I was gonna re-break it in, put a softball in the glove, close it as tight as you can, and then you just take a belt and wrap it around as tight as you can and just let it sit there for a few days, right? And then so when you are done after a couple days, Take the belt off, softball out, and then just kind of work it to your hand. You know, some guys like to flare their edges a little bit. I usually do that just to touch, just to create a nice open pocket right there. Um, I, whenever I use his gloves, I always dig them. So I'm gonna have to try that this year. But, um, so this is the first basement glove I just got. This one is also a Rawlings glove. The other two, the outfielder's gloves I have here are pro preferred. This one is a heart of the hide. So this one actually feels really stiff to me, but I've only had it for a day or two and it's actually breaking in pretty quick. So what I do with the first baseman's glove is bring this one in. I've had some good teammates that have taught me how to do this just like within the last year when I started playing first base again. So you take this one down, push this side in and then bend this side in right here. So you're basically trying to funnel everything into this pocket. So anytime a ball hits my glove, any part of the glove, I want it to work to this pocket. All right. So I, boom, I fold this in, fold this in, fold that in so that this pocket stays nice and, and deep. So the other thing I did is you just take an old bat, an old wood bat, or just even a stick, take a baseball, and some tape and you just kind of attach it like that. You make yourself a nice little mallet. So this is for, this is perfect for, you know, like not everybody has the ability to just go out and have someone chuck balls as hard as they can 
to break in a glove to them, right? So this is perfect for that. I just take my little homemade mallet here. Boom. So the more traditional way to do it is to just play catch, right? And we've all heard that, just go out, play catch with it is the best way. And there's a lot of truth to that because the more you catch a ball regularly is how you're gonna be catching the ball in the game, boom. So it's gonna to form to your hand, it's gonna to form to how you catch the ball in a nice little pocket. But this is a good way to make up for it if you don't have a catch partner. Um, and if you can't, maybe you don't have the opportunity to get out outside and have someone throw to you. This is a good way to make up for that. So I can do that with any one of my gloves. Like that. I generally like mine to be a little more floppy than most people. But um, I don't know. I'm still looking for the perfect model, the one that I'm absolutely in love with, the shape I'm absolutely in love with. So. I might try and go a little stiffer this year, and that's about it. There's many different ways. There's not necessarily a right way to break in a glove. Um, it's just kind of all about your preference, what you like to do, what you like to feel, and um, there's obviously different ways to break in different gloves, right? So if you don't break a glove in, you're not gonna be making the plays that you probably should be making. Um, the glove will stay hard, and it's gonna be really difficult to uh, keep the ball in your glove. So if I go to catch something, it's going to want to pop out because the leather is really stiff and really springy until you break it in and you wear it down a little bit and break that up. So it's very important to make sure that you break your glove in. At least have a nice pocket. Most people will keep the edges a little stiff, but that pocket needs to be nice and soft. All right, guys. So that's it as far as breaking in a glove. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.